welcome to your all hands meeting. This is a whole new way of doing it this year. As you know, with COVID happening, we're all virtual. So we have Kayla, we have Sam, Tasha, myself, and Kelly here, and we're going to try our best to get as much information to you, and hopefully you'll still have as much fun. I know there's no food and we can't see each other's faces right now, so I apologize for that, but we'll make it up to you later on in the year. Um, so are you guys ready to start? We're ready. I'm ready. All right. So first things first, you know, we always do a little bit of housekeeping in the beginning. So I want to let you guys know, we want to make sure that you are in front of your device the entire time. Um, see if your client would like to join you. Um, it would be really great to put a face to the names that I know. Um, and then you can also type in your questions for us because we don't have the ability with the Zoom to have you unmute and everybody talk to us. So Caleb is, is moderating the uh, computer and all the questions. Um, so if you're ready, we're going to get started. But with that being said, you guys see this slide right now that says Heroes from the Start. You can celebrate you have been. Um, that's what this company was founded on, is celebrating the caregivers, giving you as much information to empower you, to train you, to celebrate you with incentives, referral bonuses, all different things like that. And as you know, May was Fill Your Tank Month, so you'll be hearing more about that from Tasha later. So we always want to celebrate you. And that's what we do here. Um, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I've only been here four months, and I see so many other caregivers give their all. You guys wear your heart on your sleeve, you're caring, you're compassionate. Um, we've had a few hospice clients, and I see all the love that comes out of that. So I appreciate every one of you. So with that being said, we're going to go into our core, our, our slogan and our core values. Um, they all left me. <laughs> so I guess I'll be doing this on my own. So I hope you guys can say this with me. I can't hear you, but I hope you say it with me. So our slogan is educating professional caregivers and families. Our mission to empower and equip our caregivers with the right tools and resources needed to provide our clients with an extraordinary care experience. Our vision, to be the gold standard in home care by aligning the needs of our clients with our highly trained and compassionate caregivers who strive to make the ordinary care experience extraordinary. Our core values, integrity. We are honest, sincere, and uphold strong moral principles. Compassion, we generally care about our clients, caregivers, and community. Dedication, we strive to provide extraordinary service to our clients and caregivers. Resourcefulness, we collaborate to find innovative, innovative ways to solve our clients and caregivers' challenges. And our culture, we are a purpose-driven agency that, drops, that challenges and rewards you for a job well done while providing opportunities that promote personal and professional growth, all in a fun and collaborative working environment. I, I can definitely attest to that. I have never worked for another company that puts so much effort into training their caregivers, their office staff, and trying to find fun ways to create um, unity in, in the company. And we want everybody to feel like they're welcome and they're all valued. So I do appreciate that. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Samantha, Sam, as we all know her. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with her for the last four months. I think she's an amazing person. She has a very big heart. Um, she looks for the good in any situation. And if you're ever around her, she has this crazy laugh, but it's so infectious. We have a big, she's just a big hearted person. So welcome, Ms. Samantha. Hello. Hi, Ruth. I'm going to hand it off to you. Let's take it off. So, I guess I could put this here. Right. I can remove my mask so you guys can see my face. Can I 
Hi guys. Kind of sad I can't see all your faces, but at least I got some pictures um, of last last quarter's all the hands meeting. Um, I miss seeing your faces. I miss you all. Um, so thank you again for joining us through Zoom. Thank you, Kelly, for printing out me that I need to see it via the camera. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, so I just have a story to share with you guys. Um, aside from me being very happy to just be able to be with you guys in Sri Um But last week, I went to the grocery store after a hard day of um, bringing home a patient that was supposed to be just regular um, 10 hour shifts and turned into a hospice case. I was exhausted, um, had to go to the store to grab some groceries for the kids. And as I was walking to the store, grabbing my cart, this older man um, walking toward me, just look at me straight in front of my uniform. He's like, so hey, you are one of those heroes. Um, I was looking at him, of course, I was all embarrassed. I had no idea what he was talking about. His comment really kind of caught me by surprise. So pretty much smiled and started running away from him. Um, at that time, I didn't know what these words meant until later on I learned that there's a big movement on social media calling all of us healthcare heroes. What Don told me is our people still measure success by what you accomplished today, but by not what you overcame to succeed. I once read about an author who said success is to be measured not so much by the position that one has reached in life as by the obstacles which he has overcome when trying to succeed. For some of you who have been with us kind of long enough, last year was such a terrifying, catastrophic year for our company. Next slide. When Bacchus was bought out by Hartford Healthcare, um, they created their own home care agency and we were not allowed to visit their facility. So they had taken away all of our potential clients. Worse, they created affiliations with other nursing homes that used to love us, but their hands were tied. They hated that relationship. However, to stop there, there was nothing they could do about it because Big Papa was the one bringing on the down. A lot of sacrifices, next slide, Taylor, were made both personally by our internal team just to keep the company running. Some of you even call us, I remember those calls, asking whether or not we're going out of business. Our total marketing strategy, our growth plans, our predictions, and how we were going to provide benefits and resources for our team, everything was an epic failure. You see, the lesson we learned from these shortcomings, these heartaches, those painful experiences, became our secret source, our trump core, and has allowed us to still be alive today, going through a pandemic. Our past failures have forced us to restructure ourselves, our personal lives, our marketing strategies in the company. Have you guys visited our website? Have you guys rated us on Google? I wish I could see some hands, but um, why not? Pretty much just virtual. We've been pushing for an online presence way before this pandemic hits. And now it's such a great tool for a time like this. We wanted to show our community and the world who we are, who you are. What an amazing team we have here on the Quality Home Care and how they should be honored to have us in their home. We wanted to bake our own bread and no longer depend on a hospital or a nursing home to feed us. We want families to decide on their own who they want to care for their loved ones. Us, of them. Not because a social worker said so or a nurse said that. We wanted to feed the public the information that they needed to make an informed decision. And that is why we need you to go on our website and tell them. Tell them who you are. Tell them who we are and help them make the best decision. We've been working on having an internet presence long before all of this started. Now everything is virtual. Now everyone is going on the internet to find information. We wanted to show our community that we are the best home care agency in this county. So my word for you today, 
as we are going through a painful time in history, is to embrace your pain. Embrace your past mistakes, your failures. Embrace it all. Embrace or whatever you are going through right now. Make the best out of it. Your mistakes, your heartaches, your pain, your persecutions, or your secret source. Use it. Your failures are important. Your sufferings are important. If you learn from them, they can create the foundation that you will need to withstand the storms of the future. They will create in you the character traits that you will need to become your best self. So don't run away from them. Learn from them. Nothing in your past and present should be wasted. They can all be used. Some of us come from broken backgrounds. Some of us are victims of abuse. Some of us have suffered homelessness, either alcoholism or drug addictions. Some of us have loved, lost their loved ones. All of these experiences have shaped your identity and brought you here today. For a diamond to be created, it has to go through intense pressure and fire. And we are not so different. What also down to me is what an amazing and powerful name our company has. We are assured quality home care. You see, or in order to assure the quality of a product, you must go through various safety tests and trials. And here we are. So today I call you all not simply heroes, but also warriors. Not for what you've accomplished, but for what you had to overcome as a person to be here today. We don't know what other storms lies ahead to test the quality of this home care agency, but that is our mission. Till we meet again. My challenge to you is to encourage each other. Be a blessing to your team. Love on each other. Let your feedback be of discerning. Point out to them and to us to any area that you'd like to see us improve. Don't be afraid to speak the truth, for the truth may be the missing ingredient. We need to fireproof this company, take us all to the next chapter of our lives together. Learn that failure can help you achieve one of your greatest creativity. I want to leave you all with this quote to kind of pick you up in those times when your minds play tricks on you and remind you of your failure. I'm going to read it and after that you can all repeat it together. Next slide. Like Thomas Edison said, I have not failed. I've just found a thousand ways that won't work. I know I can't hear you all, but that's something that you can kind of carry on in your day when you are reminded of your past failures, your, your past experiences. Know that you've just learned many ways, many things that you want to do in the future. So thank you for the opportunity to be your leader and for treating me with respect despite my failures. I just wish you all an amazing time of your life. We love you and I'm sure quite Thank you. So our next, ooh, Tasha. I have the pleasure of introducing Tasha. Tasha comes to us with no background of healthcare. I don't know if she knew what a gift bell was. Do you know what a gift bell was? Before you came to us? All right. So um, you guys know and of course love and Tasha. Thank you again for showing her support when she first started and now she's kicking butt. So here's Miss Tasha Bell. All right, there you go. You have to take off the mask. Hi everyone, it's me, the pain in the behind, as I call myself. I hope you're, hope you're all doing well. So as you know, every since the COVID, a lot of schedules have changed. With that in mind, if you can all take the time to fill out this form for me, so I can go ahead and update everybody's schedules, please. Whether it's the moms that have to leave me to go to night shift, shifts, this will all help me and for yourself as well, so I can better schedule you as a caregiver and for the services that we provide to other families, please. As you know, we need time for us, whether it's a doctor's appointment or just having a couple of days off. 
With that in mind, I would like to reemphasize this. If you could please keep in mind, for doctor's appointments, it's seven days in advance notice for me so I can find coverage for you. If it is for a vacation, it is at least 30 days notice, please. As I try to accommodate everyone, if I don't have it within that time frame, time frame unfortunately, you will be declined, unfortunately. Um, on call, me and Ruth, as you know, we do do on call. It can become frustrating for yourselves and for me and Ruth when it comes to texting. As I know, I have the habit of texting, which we all have that habit, but I want to keep in mind Monday through Friday, it's okay to text us, but after hours, please call on call so that way it can get directed to either myself or Ruth in the proper channels just so we can better serve you. And also, it will make it a lot easier when we do call you guys on the weekends. I know we all have our own lives to live, but at the same time, we have families that need our help. So if you could either just say you're busy or not able to pick up the shift, that would better help me and Ruth for on-call, please. Last but not least, as you know from the last All Hands meeting, we did state that our next event would be Fill Your Tank. So please, let's just give a round of applause for the people. With that being said, I'm, I'm just outstanded by the amount of people that were able to take part in this and to see all the winners that we have in front of us today. Um, I will be reaching out to you next week to schedule that. So Kayla, he's actually going to video record it and meet at one gas station. So I'm going to have two time frames set up for you guys so you can better schedule that with me so we can go ahead and get those tanks filled up for you. Thank you for all your hard work and effort during this time. Let's go ahead and say a couple of words in regards to Ruth. I have known her in almost four months time, but in the last 90 days, this lady has been tremendous from birthday celebrations, just to the extra help that she's given me when I needed it. She's amazing, and I know you guys all love her as well. So please give me a round of applause for Ruth. Yeah, we'll wipe out the, the microphone for you. Hi again. <clears throat> well, thank you, Tasha. Um, I do have to say I've loved every minute, um, even though there, I've had some challenging times myself, but we've all worked through them. Um, just so you guys know a little bit about what I do, um, I do all the billing for all of our clients. So when you clock in and out, it helps Tasha with the scheduling, which in turn helps me make sure we bill for the proper amount of time that we've been in the client's home. I also help payroll with payroll with Caleb. I'm learning more and more about that. So any questions you have for that, you can always give me a call. And as well as I do the recruiting, um, I start and vet people who come in on our, our different various um, sites that we advertise on. On my words today. Um, so that's what I get to do. So if you have any questions, the payroll or HR questions, you can totally call me. So my biggest role right now is recruiting. As you know, we're always in need of new caregivers. We want to grow and expand our, our family of caregivers. Um, we want to grow and expand our business, and we can't do that without your help. So now you guys remember at the February All Hands meeting, we had things right up here, and she had I think six or seven referrals. So you multiply that by $250 each time. So I want to know how many checks you think you can earn this year in 2020 to bring us to 2021 with a great, big, strong team of caregivers. Um, ways you can help, like us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. I am not on half of those. I'm only on Facebook and I have like them. Um, also, Hand out your business cards to any potential caregivers as well as clients. Um, we just had a client referred to us by one of our caregivers, Teresa Salapia. Yay! Um, we don't really advertise our business except for word of mouth and on certain, certain occasions. So you guys are the front line to us getting new caregivers. You can talk to them and let them know what it's like to work for us here at ASQ. You can let them know how much fun we have. 
um, how much training we give. I know just being here and hearing some of the other potential um, caregivers that come into the office and say how they work for other companies and they don't get the training. They don't even go through a, such a rigorous um, interviewing process. So for us, that I think helps us. So I wanna help you guys. So with that being said, we're also going to be getting new business cards. Um, they're gonna be more user friendly. They're gonna have our website on the backside as well as the Hire Me um, logo. They're gonna be easier for you guys to hand out so you don't have to hand out the, the job one as well as your business card to make sure that they get your name and your information. So I wanna see how many people can make it rain money, 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 money for them. So, um, so as you know, we're in COVID-19 strong and we wanna go over a few things with you. So as you know, I just sent out a text message and email about our travel policy. If you plan on traveling and you're going to any of the hot spots, such as New York, New Jersey, um, I'm not sure of some of the other ones off the top of my head, but please call the office and let us know that you're traveling and we will let you know which hot spots they are. If they are a hot spot, you are going to have to self quarantine for 14 days and then be tested as well and come back with a negative COVID testing. Um, it's to protect our clients. As you know, our clients are in the, the higher risk category. Um, so we want to protect you as well as our clients. Also, um, we want to talk about social distancing. You know, many of us, myself included, our kids are home from school. They want to hang out with their friends. They want to do this. The, I know my son, he's 12, he's bored out of his mind right now <laughs> and driving us crazy. But no handshaking, no hugs with people you don't know. Um, you'll see on the slide, bump some elbows, do the namaste. There's plenty of ways to say hello. Um, we also have the COVID-19 survey. Please make sure you're filling that out each shift. It just gives us a better understanding of what you guys are going through. If you're sick, if you have a fever, please call. Day or night, like Tasha said, she and I are on call. Um, and so with that being said, we are coming out with new masks. Um, the church graciously donated 80 of those masks to us, but we are finding that from our caregivers that um, they're kind of painful to wear. So I have a friend who's a seamstress, and she's been going through different patterns. So I have Mr. Caleb who's going to show you one of our new masks. There are no ties. They don't sit on your ears. They go over your head. They fit better. And Mr. Caleb has been wearing his for what, two days now? Two days. Two days. And he forgets that they're there. So one of the ties goes above your head, on the crown of your head. The other one goes down on the bottom. And there's a little slide back here to adjust it. Um, we are going to have a uh, medium. Oh, Miss Kelly's coming to help. This is twisted. There you go. Um, Going to come and we're going to measure you. Um, so I'll send you guys a video link beforehand. They're going to be in three colors to match our uniforms, and they are going to be mandatory with your uniform. So thank you, Mr. Caleb, for that display of fashion, <laughs> and thank you, Kelly, for your help. Um, so we want to make sure that you guys are taking all the precautions necessary. So another thing that I do um, is I take in the live-in timesheets. There's not too many of the live-in caregivers, so, but I want everybody to have this information. We did create a new live-in timesheet. Some of you have already gotten them. If you don't have them, please let me know. I'll email you the link so you have it for yourself or stop in the office. We always want to see your lovely faces. I want to see all those smiles. But I come in on Monday morning to do billing and I need to make sure that I get your form on Sunday by 10 o'clock because it, it helps me get through billing easier. And if you guys are not having any, um, you're missing your sleep time, I need to be able to record that so I can build the customer property for you. Um, you can email them to me. I put my email up on the screen, so hopefully you guys can see all of that. You can fax them as well, and I'll definitely get that. I know um, Connie and Teresa definitely fax those in for me or you can drop them off in person. If you're on the weekends and you want you come in by the office, we do have a mailbox downstairs, you can just drop them right in the mailbox and Monday morning when I get the mail, I'll get them. So I appreciate all your help with that and thank you very much. The new form actually gives you more space. 
It gives you information slots so that you can put your start and stop time if you get interrupted. Say you have a client that gets up in the middle of the night and they need help because they need to, to have assistance because they're a fall risk. You're going to write down what time you started, say 10.23, and you're going to put down what time you stopped, say 11.05, because they had an accident. You're going to put that down and you're going to tell me the reasons why. Because a lot of times our clients are getting paid or we're paying the clients, sorry, we're paying the caregivers for your sleep time, but people don't understand what it's for. So the most information you can give me, the better. So I appreciate that. So next one, please. So one of my other great jobs around here is I get to see all your great faces. So everybody on this screen right now has either celebrated their 90 days, congratulations, or one year. So we want to give kudos to everybody. Retention here is phenomenal. Um, I have seen it firsthand. Um, I hear people talking about other people, um, how great it is to work here. So bravo to all of you for doing such a great job and being our frontline heroes. Um, so, all right, now here's the man of the hour, Mr. Caleb. He is a great guy, very kind hearted. He does work so many tireless hours here. He does our marketing. He Just is our screen. tech expert. He's trying to teach Kelly thing. right now what to do on the, the uh, podium there. And he's just our all-around go-to guy. We have an issue, we go see Caleb. So welcome, Mr. Caleb. Okay, everyone. Um, excited to uh, be before you. Uh, and I want to start off with a big uh, thank you. Go ahead, Kelly. Uh, as you all know, last week, was it last week? Yeah, last week was my birthday. And for those of you who know me, I'm pretty unassuming. I usually don't celebrate my birthday. It's not that I don't celebrate, I just don't make a big deal out of it. Um, ever since I went to college, you know, you just grow up out of your birthday. So usually for, I wanna say the past seven years at least, I've always been working on my birthday and I've always pretty much stayed busy on my birthday. Maybe on the weekend I do something. And if my mom gave me some money, I'd be happy about that. But otherwise, my birthdays have been uneventful, and so uh, I was very, very uh, surprised and taken aback when you all decided to do what you did for um, my birthday. And I just want to thank you and appreciate you for that because, uh, as I said, um, initially I wasn't sure how to handle it because I don't usually celebrate my birthday, and then I just had to take a step back and be thankful for um, just being able to enjoy and have uh, the, the type of birthday celebration that you all uh, did for me. So overall, uh, I think it was a wonderful time and we had a great, great celebration. As you can see, I had multitudes of balloons and it was a lot of fun. So um, go ahead, Kelly, just click on the next. Okay, give me one second. It seems as if Kelly has kind of uh, made a mistake. Okay, so yes. we're back at it. Thanks for your patience. Uh, <laughs> Kelly's learning how to become our new technician. <laughs> so, uh, and she's a technician in training. So if you have any cell phone problems, um, any challenges with your printer, any challenges with your computer, bring them here. <laughs> Kelly, not only can she troubleshoot your software issues, but she can actually fix it as well. You know, she's getting there. So uh, thanks for all your patience. Um, so moving on, uh, as you all know, we are always working to try to make what we do for our clients and our caregivers um, work better. So uh, we're always evaluating what can we do to make this agency run better? What can we do to make our caregivers' lives easier? What can we do to make our clients' lives easier? And so prior to this whole COVID thing, uh, we realized that it's really difficult for us to other than the all hands meeting, we wanted a platform or a way to make continual education and um, make it easy for us to communicate with you policies that the agencies um, that we have as an agency, and so that you can easily understand what we're saying instead of just sending a bunch of messages through clear air with an attachment to go read a document. So what we've decided to do is, after a lot of research, uh, we decided to invest in a platform. The name of the platform is called Trainual 
over between uh, starting next week um, and maybe uh, next week and until the end of the month of May, we're going to be helping all of you get this. Um, this is going to be an app. You can get it on your phone, or if you don't have a smartphone, you can access it on your tablet, or you can access it online as well with your computer. And we're really excited about Trainio because of a couple things. The first is that it's going to make it easy for us to onboard new caregivers. So that way, those of you who have been to our orientation, you know that it's a lot of information in a short amount of time. What Trainio will help us to do is it'll help us to make the onboarding process a lot simpler for our caregivers because we're not only going to be able to record videos in there, but we'll also have our policies in there. And we'll also have live examples and things to help make their job easier. And for all of you who's existing, who's on our team, um, how many of you carry your uh, employee handbook around with you? Uh, probably none of you, because I know I don't. I know Seely does. Okay, so, well, Seely is the only caregiver who walks around with the employee handbook in her bag. And kudos to you, Seely. I'm going to call you when I have a question. So what we're doing is, in order to help make the... Um, make it work better for you we are actually um this trainer will have will house the employee handbook so not only will the employee handbook be within training the great part about that is that we're going to um we'll be able to add videos for the different policies so not only will you be able to read a policy but you'll be able to watch a short video that helps to further explain the thought process behind that policy and as they continue to improve that platform, you'll also be able to um, ask a question or make some suggestions as to what we can add to our employee policy moving forward. And the other piece of training that we're super excited about is that we'll be able to do um, host trainings on there. So that means, let's say you miss this all hands meeting, we can upload that video into Trainio and send that to you within there. And you can watch that all hands meeting or else if Kelly does a one hour in service on dementia and you're not here, um, and you're not able to be a part of it, we'll be able to record that in-service and then send it to you in training so that you can watch that in-service. And at the end, it'll ask you a couple of questions just to make sure that you understand what you have watched. So we're pretty excited. It'll give you some certifications and different things like that. But overall, the excitement behind this um, product is that it's going to allow us to um, make what we do as an agency more available to you so that you have resources at your fingertip uh, as you are out in the field uh, providing care to our clients. So last, two weeks ago, we sent out a video to all of our caregivers asking you to rate us. Um, it was a long video, I admit. Usually our videos are five minutes or less, but this one was about, uh, I wanna say nine to 10 minutes. So some of you may not have made it to the end. If you didn't, Watch it again, it's a pretty good video. We talked about our um, home care post reviews and what our clients and caregivers had to say. So at the end of the video, and maybe like at the seven minute mark, I asked all of you to go onto our web, to go on Google or go to rateasq.com and rate us. Now, I thought I was pretty inspirational. So I was expecting to have maybe a hundred reviews because some of you would go to review us five different times and the next day I go on there's no reviews I'm like all oh, these reviews are coming it's just they're they're a little busy our caregivers are busy they, they haven't had the time yet a week later there's still no new reviews so I'm assuming maybe you didn't watch the entire video but one of the things that we talked about in that video was the importance of reviewing us online um, I'm gonna go through an experience we all here, all of us here, I don't, I, whenever I'm making a purchase, even if I walk into Walmart or I walk into um, Stop and Shop and I want to buy a brand of ice cream, I go on my phone and Google that ice cream just to make sure people like it. So I'm sure all of us here are very familiar to the value behind um, why reviews are important, why five out of five stars says, this is a good product, I'm definitely buying it. But I think I thought I'd go through it again for the sake of the team, just to make sure to reiterate why it's so important. Why are we spending so much time stressing, reviewing our agency on Google? No, not yet, Kevin, you can leave it. The first is that when you review us on, on um, your reviews increase our online presence. So let's say I live in California and my mom is sick and I need home care services. She lives in New London. I Google home care services or home care agencies or home care. Google will show 
the top rated, so after the ads, as you know, there's a lot of ads, um, one or two um, ads for every search that you do. After the ad section, Google rates the most rated home care agencies next. So they're gonna rate the agencies that are in the area, and then once they have finished rating the agencies that are in the area, they then, they then go by how many ratings does this company have. So when you review us online, what that does is if someone's looking for a home care service and they search home care or something similar or caregivers, and they're looking for that service in the areas that we provide, it ensures that we show up within the top five list. If we have no reviews, we don't even show up on the first page. And I don't know about you, I'm pretty sure most of us here, we never go beyond the first page of Google, never mind the first half. Usually like the first three choices, that's what we're clicking. I typically don't even click on the ones that say ads because I, I know that the company paid to be at that top spot. I usually look to see, okay, where are the reviews? Where is this company landing? The next thing that happens is one, so first of all, now when the family searches for home care, they see us there. The next thing they get to see is, well, how well is this company reviewed? So when they look at the stars and they see five stars, right? What that tells them is, oh, this is a good company. If they saw one star, they'd be like, oh, this is a crappy company, I'm not even gonna look at it. Most of the time, as most of us here, what we do is we just look at how many stars does this company have and how many reviews. If they had one, one review and it's a five star, they're like, well, that, maybe their sons or daughters look bad. But when a company has 20, 30, 40 reviews and it's at a five star level, what that does is it validates the company. And the reason why we're asking you to review us is not because we want to feel good about ourselves. We already know we're the best home care agency in this area, but what we're asking you to do when we review us is to validate yourself. Um, if someone has never met you, has never met somebody who's used ASQ services, they're not going to know if ASQ is a trustworthy company and if they have a good service to provide. So your reviews are very, very important for the fact that it helps to build trust. Once they can trust us, then they'll visit our website. Sometimes they call us right away, but a lot of times they're going to want to learn more about who we are as a company, then they visit the website. Now you see the website, that's where we invested a lot of time, energy, and effort to make that website what it is. And a lot of you have come and given us great feedback. I thank you for taking a look at it. Um, and I can tell you that we poured a lot of time and energy into that website. And it's just the beginning of what we plan on doing with that. Because what we are continuing to do is to prove to people who go online that there's no other home care agency that has as high quality caregivers as ASQ. And when they go to the website, they're gonna be able to understand what is it that makes us different than any other home care agency. And all of you have worked, most of you have worked for another home care agency, and you know what it's like out there. So you know that our mission is to equip and empower you. So you know that this is all about you. When a family goes to the website and they learn about who we are, what we do, they, validated our reviews through the trust. They've been on the website. They maybe access our resources. They see the pictures of our caregivers. And they're like, okay, this is a good and a professional company. I, it seems as if this is the company I want to walk into my mom's home. Then they will call us. And that's why we're asking you, it all starts with the reviews. No reviews, no presence. No presence, no trust, right? Then how do they make it to our website? There's thousands upon thousands of other home care agencies out there. So I can't stress it enough, can we go ahead? Um, you are an important part of the marketing team. And what I'm saying is when we ask you to review us, it's not so that we can pump ourselves up, it's so that we can pump you up. The most important thing that we need to do here at ASQ is to keep every single one of our caregivers employed, busy, able to provide for their families. That is our most important aspect of what we do here at Assured Quality Home Care. So once again, I wanna thank you for all that you've done and all that you continue to do. Um, just know that we are always rooting for you. We're always doing things for trying to value it. How can we do things better? Um, despite what's going on with COVID, as some of you know, if you lost a client, we didn't have another client to, um, to put you in place with. We're bringing you into the office because we wanna make sure that we're keeping all of our caregivers on the team, we're keeping you busy during this busy time. 
So um, well, I'm going to go and introduce our next person, but she actually stepped away from the computer. So I, um, if you could, Ruth, just uh, go ahead and click on, you'll see the picture of the next slide. It says next, just click it, click on it for me. And, uh, there we go, all right, cool. So I, I'm really excited. Um, I said all that I felt that I needed to say, and hopefully you all now understand why I'm always pressing in and pressing in on the importance of reviews. Um, now, when we talk about being a great company, um, it's not a name that makes a great company. It's not a logo that makes a great company. It's not just a mission and vision statement that makes a great company. It's the people within the company. And so um, you know that the most important piece of what we do here at ASQ is the caregivers. And so that's why we put a lot of time and emphasis to when we bring someone on board to make, and we keep them that we make sure that that person can speak the language of our caregivers, understands what you're going through, and can uh, relate to you, and has your best interest in mind. And I gotta tell you, when we first started our agency, um, a while back, uh, we four years ago, right? Four years ago when we first started the agency, this person who I'm gonna introduce to you, uh, she, she walked into our little closet office that we had, and she asked, how can I help you? And since then, it has been the same thing. How can I help? How can I help? How can I help? She understood the vision from the very beginning. We were in it to hire, train, and retain the world's best caregivers. And I have to say, based on all that you see that's going on, your performance reviews, the different things that we do to, to um, empower and equip you, I want to tell you and let you know that Kelly is the source of all that. You really, she really loves you. She cares for you, and she gets a sense of satisfaction knowing that our caregivers are well cared for and they're set up for success. So, without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. It's my pleasure. And you know, I don't think of that as being anything special because I'm old school, and I think of that as just doing my job. <laughs> right? Um, so, um, many of you are familiar with me, you're familiar with how direct I am, you're familiar with if you have a problem, we're going to talk about it, we're going to solve that problem together. I'm going to give you some tools and resources to um, help you either become better or help you solve your challenges in the field. I'm also, um, when I, you do come in for those uh, reviews. I listen to what you say and I listen to the feedback and when more I hear from more than one source um, that they are having struggles or troubles with maybe a system. I, um, I'm, I'm trying to problem solve that for you with my team. Um, Sam and I have put some work into this project and what I'm going to present on today is um, coming up with a better way to document um, the accountability for your narcotic account. There's been a lot of um, confusion, and I have an uh, example up here of um, why we're going to be going to a different method. Um, so, what you're seeing there on the document, and I have it here in my hand so I can read them along with you, um, the caregivers um, feel the need to have to write notes about what's going on with the narcotic. Counts. That being said, that means there's something wrong with the system. So Sam and I have taken upon ourselves to listen to your feedback and to provide you with new way to document narcotics, new way to count them. Um, not that you're counting any differently, but to, to uh, take responsibility. So I'm going to talk about um, why we're doing this next. Um, but first I want you to see this note here. It says, Caregivers, please fill out the med form slowly and pay attention to the columns. These are controlled substances. We are documenting and it's super important to fill this out correctly. Thank you, you're awesome. Okay, I do believe the last part of that, you're awesome, but I don't believe that we need to have said all of that other stuff if our system was a good system. So, we're going to next, go to the next slide please, thank you. We're going to talk about what your responsibilities are as you come on shift and what you're doing. Um, so 
Narcotic responsibilities uh, are very, we, we take them not lightly. We, take, we want to protect you um, and uh, the rest of the team from errors or uh, mishaps. Uh, when you come on, you know you do your shift count. You have the narcotics, you both look at them, you both verify that the number's correct. Um, when it's anything, and we also um, are probably not always looking at a lock box, so we want to incorporate that as part of your process. So when you come on going forward, when you have um, introduction to the new process, you're going to have the lock box, so you're looking at it, you're not opening it, you're looking at the lock box, then you're also verifying the count for the narcotics. That really hasn't changed other than the addition of the looking at the lock box. When do you do this? You do it at the change of shift. When else do you document? You document when you're going to give medication. So those are two things that haven't changed either. And why are we doing it again? To ensure accuracy, um, accountability, that the count's correct. And it's going to, like I said, provide you protection and provide the agency protection. Next slide, thank you. So these are what the new sheets are going to look like. And when you look at the first one, it has the client's name, a fictitious client. We haven't provided her service yet. Um, and then also um, what the medication is. It's morphine. The only time you're going to sign on this sheet is when you're actually giving the medication. So it makes the count crystal clear. You're not looking at that old form where three different medications were listed on the same form. This form is exclusively taking accountability for the morphine. The next, uh, not the next slide, but the next form over is going to be what you sign when you come on and you leave your ship. So I'm going to do a little demonstration later on um, in the production, and it's going to kind of walk you through the steps that are gonna go on. Um, so the narcotic ship verification. I just want you to know um, that that has a list of things that will set you up for success. It tells you at the top of the form, as you can see, the names of the narcotics that you are going to be held accountable for. So you, in the, in the way that the format is, I'm gonna just grab one prop. When you come in and you've got your client binder, if your client has narcotics, I want you to set the book up so when you first open it up, you are looking at that shift verification. It's that, that, that's important because that's going to hold you and the oncoming caregiver responsible for knowing what's on there. Um, so we, what we have here is we have, you know, flip it on and read it. A list of all the controlled substances that you are going to be counting today. Also, if there's a lockbox, you can see now there's actually a column that says, is there a lockbox? Today we're going to say, yes, there is, because we're going to do a demo. Uh, and then the next column is simply very straightforward. The caregiver that's leaving that verifies the count with the oncoming caregiver. So you can see I came in this morning at 7 a.m. I counted off with Sam, who was leaving, um, and at 7 a.m., the pages behind this all matched what the count looked like when I visualized the syringes. So I'm going to do a little demonstration now with the help of Sam. Well done. Okay, so I've already washed my hands and I'm ready for Sam to come. So I'm gonna make sure my mask is on. I just had it off so I can speak with you, but now you're gonna have to listen to me through the muffled mask. <laughs> okay, so this is the new process. I've washed my hands. I have the medication ready for Sam to count. I've got the book out. So Sam comes into her ship, she cleans her hands, and she puts on her glove. I'm not gonna to touch the medication anymore, but Sam is. That's why she's washing her hands and putting on her gloves. So 
next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about my shift. Oh, it was awesome. Mm -hmm. We had a great day. She didn't need any pain medication today. Mm -hmm. uh, she really hasn't taken anything since she was here last time. Okay, perfect. This is great. So, we don't sign this sheet, the verification sheet, until we actually do the count. So, we're going to do the count. The first page in my account is going to say, okay, she's got valued syringes. And yeah, I'm just going to count them. All right, there's two syringes, and, and I, I see, see it's a valium, and I verify the label as well too to make sure it's matched. So, so we do have, we agree that there's two valium syringes. The next count is going to be on the sheet. Again, the client, the morphine, and what is what we see here is. I've not had to use it. So the original eight syringes of morphine that were there when I came on my shift are still here for Sandy Count. I'm ready to verify it's the right medication. They all look about the same, so the amount is correct. The Sam says there's eight morphine syringes. She's gonna put them back in the back. Now let's talk about what happens with the syringes. Sometimes you're going to come on shift and you're going to see a syringe without a cap, right? It might be in this in this COVID time we do have people who are having difficulty getting all of the products that they need to make um, the couch, you know, absolutely perfect. So sometimes we have seen syringes with no caps on, and that does cause a problem. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, in a perfect world, which we know we don't live in, um, all of them would have caps like this. We know we've gone into clients' houses where there's not been any caps at all, and that poses a problem. If, if I was to get the medication that the client asked for it, and um, I tripped on the way to giving it to her, the syringe came out of my hand, it landed on the plunger, some of the medication came out, now, I don't have enough of that dose to give her. I know that syringe is no good. It's landed on the floor. Some of it came out. I need to label that. Still keep it with my count, but say do not use. That's really an important thing to know, and that's actually happened. We had to educate the caregivers on how to handle that, that specific syringe. So, going forward with the demo, we're going to we have to put them away. Now all we have to do is go to our shift verification sheet next. And what happens here is I see what time it is. It's 2.40. I'm going to say 2.40 p.m. I see there's a lockbox. Sam sees there's a lockbox. So Sam's really going to write yes that she sees it because she wants to make sure that uh, she's taking that responsibility on. So, a question for you. When that syringe fell on the floor, should they fill out an incident report? Yeah, so we've got that in an upcoming slide, but thank you. That's a great question, Ruth. Anytime there is a medication error or an incident, something happens to the medication and you need to let somebody know that also requires an incident report. Thank you. So what I'm signing is that I've verified the syringe that was amount of valium, morphine, and also in his lock box. So that's count as three medications, three things yes. that I'm actually taking a bond for. So oh yes. So I'm gonna sign first because I'm leaving. And you're going to sign next because you're coming on. Great. So I have one more slide in my presentation. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. You've been a lovely assistant. You're welcome. Um, my last slide, it talks about other things that you're going to consider <laughs> that might require an action. And this is, um, say, the you're at your shift and the nurse comes in and she fills a bunch of syringes. Well, if she fills a bunch of syringes, she has to take responsibility by adding the number of syringes she 
filled. So for an example, if she came in and I only had two valium syringes left, we would want to make sure she filled some more valium syringes. So if she said, okay, well, let's have a total of 10 on hand, so she's going to fill eight. We would say, oh, well, we have this system and we'd like you to take accountability. Be accountable for what we've added to our stock. So the nurse and you, she would, you can write the date, you can write the drug, write the amount of syringes she's adding here. So this would be an eight, and then that eight plus two is going to bring our count up to ten. I hope that's clear, but don't worry if it's not, you will have further education and training on this. There will be some training, which Caleb spoke at, about, um, that will be coming out shortly. Um, so that's how you would take care of a nurse adding additional syringes. She signs for it. Where it says client, that can also be the nurse signature. And then you sign it. So that's two people verifying that there was something added to the stock. The next situation I have up there is if the count is not right, say Sam had come in and I had given some morphine because she was in pain, but I forgot to document that. I know she had morphine at 12 noon. I even wrote it in my little log book, you know, that you write for all of your daily things, but I forgot to write it on that individual page. This is okay for you to chart that at the time when you find that there has been a discrepancy or an error, or an, we call that o omission. You forgot about it, you left it out. So when you've left out something and it's identified that change of shift, perfectly fine to add it back in. That way, you're going forward, you're going to say, okay, now there's only seven syringes of morphine here. Sam identified that. I forgot to write it. I put it on the line item. I gave him a syringe at any time. That takes care of um, problem number two. Um, I talked about what if the medication falls on the floor, you drop the syringe, you, it could be a pill, the client could have spit it out, you know, something like that. Let us know about it in an incident report, and then also we'll. Um, instruct you on how to document that in the book as well. If, if you drop something on the floor, do not throw it away until somebody else can watch you throw it away. And I hope that makes sense because if everything needs two witnesses except for when you actually help your client take the medication. And I think that's the end of my slide. Is that right? So, when will you see these new forms coming in to our process out in the field? We're going to develop that training. Um, it's going to be available to you in Trannual. Um, in Trannual, you will um, go on and it will probably be a very brief presentation. It's kind of um, going through the steps that we talked about today, maybe a little more detail, some interactive video. They'll be at the end of question and answer se section, so we understand that you know what the right uh, procedures are for this and um, when you need to notify us. So, always know any one of our processes is always open for discussion. We will talk about it, we will tear it apart, we will bring it back to you in a new form. Your feedback helps us become a better company. So I appreciate all of the caregivers. Anytime you come to me with a struggle, I hope I am helping you problem solve these struggles. I can only, I'm one person, so I can only do a few problems at a time, but I don't think that if you haven't seen your problem be solved. Um, acutely, I try to problem solve the clients um, quickly as possible. But if it's something like this, like I presented on today, where it's a procedure, something's not right, it's causing more confusion, it's creating you to have stress, um, I need to know about those because these are all works in progress and we need your help to work out the kinks. So I don't know, um, I think for the questions, 
forum, we're going to have typed in questions um, and Caleb is going to moderate those. Um, so going in regards to the presentation, um, what about if the narcotics are in the lockbox, but it's not at the client's home? Okay, so that's a great question. We cannot be responsible for anything that we can't see or, 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 you know, or have knowledge of. So if somebody is, let's say a family member takes that, those narcotics home with you, with them at the end of every day when they're leaving, but there's enough syringes to get you through the evening until they arrive the next day, then we would say lockbox, no, because we can't, we don't have access to it. We never have access to what's inside it. But if they are taking the lockbox with them, there's really even no reason to have a lockbox because they're bringing it home. They, I think that, you know, that's a great question. Um, is there anybody, uh, and, and can you let me know, Mia, yeah, if I answered that fully for you? Okay, so I, I'm guessing I've answered her question because I don't have any feedback. Let's see. Um, what about if the narcotics in the lockbox, oh, if, if it's the nurse from a different agency that takes it. Um, so really, are you talking about, um, let's say it's a hospice case and there's a hospice nurse that comes in and um, she's brought the box in with her or she's brought the meds in with her and she takes the meds back out with her. I'm fine with that, but if that box was, you were counting it and now she's taken the whole box and, it, and when we say box, we're talking about something that you don't know what's inside, right? <coughs> we're not talking about a cardboard box that has the label of the medication. When you pick up your box, you're gonna feel some weight to it. Right. So also it could be too, like sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes your clients may be in an assisted living facility and they have nurses that come in with their medication box, give them a medication and kind of walk away. That could also be a situation in a time like this, you're really not assisting or doing anything medication. That's the nurse's responsibility. You see that, you can document that in your note. But you're not actually the one managing the patient medication. Is the nurse or the assisted facility that comes in administer medication or a nursing home? Some of us have find a nursing home that takes medication. In a case like this, you just know that it could be medication in the morning. You know that you know, but you're not really going to get accountable for something that's not really not your responsibility. So if if this happens to you, where you have been counting a long box as part of your responsibility. When you say yes here, a hospice nurse comes in and want and takes that med, med box out with her, make sure she is signing that she is taking that out. So the next time you say no, make sure that you have, um, you know, that in addition to her saying that she's taking it, that you know who she is. That, so you have her name and um, a, a contact, you know, like, if it's somebody you've never ever seen before, definitely be be on the phone with us because we don't know that we don't know that person. We don't know what agency they work for. Um, more than likely, there's a good reason, but we sometimes are the last ones to find out that reason. So, if she's taking the long box, you make sure um, that she does say yes. Uh, you would make a note here. Susan Jones here at such and such a time left with lock box. She signs it, you sign it. Okay, does that answer the question, Mia? I have one other question um, that's been posed and it says, could you clarify what to do when the client is unable to initial on the individual narcotic log, please, because it's not a change of shift and no one else is there. 
So if we have established that, you know, we know as people become sick and they're actively dying, they cannot take on that responsibility. This is that gray area where you've already built up the relationship with your client and we know what their routine is and you're seeing them restless. Um, this is the one time that it's okay for them not to sign, but if a family member is there, please ask them to sign. Can I open it up? Yes. Yeah, um, you were always trying to encourage your patient um, to sign. Even I've seen a kind of little dribble around um, that you can recognize because they're not, some of them, they, because of their hand coordination, they, it's not really a perfect sign. Now, in the big way your patient is unconscious, and that's really what you meant, unconscious or actively dying, those usually they were on those times, we already start getting the family involved. Um, if a patient is forgetful, the hand can still work, still trying to get them to do that. It just, it's just for practice. But when they get to a point where they are unconscious, they are mostly actively dying, that's when they really cannot. If they really cannot, they're not able to at the time. We are, you know, with your feedback, we are getting the family involved. There's been times when we call a family that was all the way in California, they came too soon, so they had to fly back. But we do our best to stay on top of that. That way we're not putting you in an uncomfortable, really uncomfortable situation. Um, we do our best, as the, the more, the earlier we know, we're trying to get the family involved. I mean, that's why we're working with nurse power, right? Like, last time we had our um, all hands meeting, we talked about having a private duty nurse so that we can create and uh, provide a solution for that gap. So that when our client become out of where they're not able to, um, you know, take the medication, and we can have nurses and our company, hopefully that will provide the services for those clients. So thank you for your question. And was that thoroughly answering? Did you get a full answer? That's Seely. Yep, Seely. Seely. Any other questions? Are there any other questions about the narcotic uh, presentation or anything in general? Um, thank you so much. Um, I know that there was one other question Celie asked me today on the phone, and it was about her client's toenails. Um, so as we know, clients are not going out to the podiatrist. They're not you know, having podiatrists even come into their home at this time. Um, with the with virus restrictions or even physicians making it a personal choice not to provide those services at this time. <clears throat> we may be coming up with a quick solution, as Dan mentioned, the nurse power. Um, we would like to begin to make the clients aware that this is a, a service, but it is a billable service. So it's not Sam and I popping in to make a visit and actually provide the podiatry service. Um, definitely schedule a visit. We would have to have certain equipment in the home. We don't want, we don't have an autoclave, so we can't bring our own equipment into the home to make this happen. So the clients would have to have certain instruments that would help us to facilitate them getting either their toenails clipped and or their fingernails clipped. Because we know um, all of you shouldn't be clipping. You can file, you can file every day, but you can't clip um, because we're going to put them at risk for an injury um, which might become more than just a, a cute um, little nick or cut. could be a septicemia or an amputation or in extreme cases. Um, any other questions that you want to put out there? This is your meeting. This is your time to ask away and we'd be happy to um, hear from you. Okay, so you want to comment on this this picture here? So the slide Caleb has up now is our last all hands meeting, and when I looked at this picture yesterday, I was amazed because it is a first. All but one person in that photo still currently works for our organization. So I'd like to you know give you all a great round of applause. easy going out there not easy especially in the beginning when you don't know what you're dealing with that was scary a lot of people were like oh my god i coughed i gotta go get tested for covid right 
right? Um, but we've gotten beyond that. We understand what's going on, and we really want to celebrate you all for staying healthy, for using good hand washing, for wearing your mask, for educating your clients, and really taking care of your families because without the efforts that you are putting in, we would not be seeing these awesome results. So thank you very much. We appreciate you all. Uh, Caleb has, is going to do closing remarks, so he'll be in momentarily. Okay, so uh, if you could give us feedback, whether it's going to be at the end of the presentation, you're going to get the opportunity to rate the meeting, see how it went, any feedback that you give us is, would be great. Uh, you can give feedback as you speak to Tasha, you can send an email, you can give feedback to Ruth. However you send the feedback is definitely helpful for, um, to us because we are certainly trying to uh, continue to be a, a resource to you even as COVID-19 is running the course that it's running. Uh, we want to make sure that we're still being a resource, we're still problem solving, we're still uh, empowering and equipping our caregivers because that's what we stand on. That's what makes us the agency that we are. And that's what I believe our clients appreciate the most uh, about the services that we provide. So in closing, uh, at our last all hands meeting, uh, I had shared our six by seven year plan and I wanted to reiterate it about it. So um, with COVID-19, there's a lot of fear. A lot of people are afraid. Companies are shutting down. Businesses, uh, companies are going out of business. And all sorts of crazy things are happening. But what we wanted to re reiterate to you is that our plan still remains the same. So we have to adjust, obviously. However, the plan remains the same. Um, when you make a seven-year game plan, nobody knows what's really going to happen over the course of the next seven years. And so the seven-year game plan might become a 10-year game plan. It might be a three-year game plan. But the goal is we know where we're going, and we always want to continue to share that with you, where we are headed as a home care agency, so that you can understand that the game, the, the, the goal has not changed. We may have to adjust some things, but overall, our goal here at ASQ, seven years from now, we will have grown. So by Thanksgiving of 2027, we will have grown by six times. We will be providing care to more clients. We will have more locations. We will be providing multiple services. Excited to let you know that we started the process to launch Nurse Power so that we can do some private duty nursing, which Kelly mentioned for our clients. And we will be promoting more and more of our caregivers. And we will be providing more and more benefits to our caregivers. The whole goal behind the whole thing is that um, we want to continue to be set the gold standard in equipment and power our caregivers. Uh, and just know that the goal for ASQ has not changed. And I know everybody's celebrating heroes today. There's planes in the air and all sorts of great stuff. This is all wonderful stuff. However, I want you to know that we will always be celebrating you. We will always be celebrating you because you are our heroes. We created ASQ because of you, because you are our heroes. And this company was created to celebrate you, our heroes. So I want to thank you for the time that you've given us. We are ending on time, 3 o'clock. Um, if your clients were um, watching in, I hope they were. They, they got a chance to see the heart of what we're doing and what we're about. And that it's not just a show and that there's a lot of time and effort that goes behind finding great caregivers and that they really do have a wonderful person in their home and that we stand behind you and that we're always going to be working with you to make things better. So in closing, we all want to thank you again for attending our first virtual audience meeting and uh, just know that we're here to support you and take care. God bless. We're praying for your safety and we'll always be working for your safety. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye.